since this is what I do every day, uh, you know, I've, I've got a good feel of, of the limitations and, and the capabilities of my kids. And so I would give them suggestions of where I felt phrases should be and where breaths should be. And I asked Jared about it at, when he came to our last rehearsal. I said, okay, I've done this, you know, and, and I don't want to step on your toes if you don't like something. And, um, you know, he was like, whatever, you, you know, you, you do what you think you need to do, but right here, that needs to be a phrase. And I was like, okay, cool, we will, it'll be a phrase. <laughs> we, we actually talked about that just last week. So, yeah. you know, I just want to make sure that our interpretation is the musical interpretation that he wants it to be. Uh, we want to please him. He has gone to all this trouble for us, and we want to, we want to please him as well. Well, you know, of course, I mean, I appreciate that. At the, at the same time, uh, as a composer, I have, a, I have a very realistic view that comes um, from being a performer as well. And that is, um, when I play, you know, Mozart's music or, you know, Prokofiev, um, I don't have the benefit of him being in the room, you know, telling me what to do. Right. And so I have to draw on my musical intelligence to make those kinds of decisions. And so when I'm composing, um, I, I think about that as well. At the end of the day, I, I want, I mean, what I do is I put on paper to where, to where it just it looks ideal knowing that all ensembles and directors are going to make choices that they sure. need to make depending on their ensemble. Exactly. String players are the same way. And it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a joke among composers that you can put in phrasings and bowings, know that they will always change it. So, and, and there will be some of those critical moments at which the composer set needs down bows, and the string players get it. And the same thing with, with a, a singer. If they want a visible breath or a grand pause, you put that in there for the singer so that they know, oh, you do want a, a, a totally marked breath there. Otherwise, I, I prefer to leave that to the taste and the choice of the directors and the conductors and, and the performers. Well, themselves. and we changed that today. Mm -hmm. We took a breath today where we had spoken about, mm -hmm. don't, you know, I really want this, mm -hmm. but I could tell when we got to that point that the kids, mm -hmm. they, they needed a breath. We right. all needed to regroup. Yeah. And we did, and they followed, and it, you know, it just, it all worked out. You just kind of know, it's, that's part of making music. Yeah, I, I, I totally <laughs> agree, and that's part of the live experience. And, and, you know, I mean, the, the fact is, is that it was done very music. See, everybody's self, everybody's conscious, they're conscientious about it. And so I think that, that at the end of the day is what wins the music. And again, as I, I'm a performer, so I get that. And so as a composer, I'm not at all, you know, offended by any kind of different judgments made. I mean, I think it's really critical to allow an ensemble to make those kinds of choices, you know, because it, it, it's going to come out musically no matter what. If, they, if they're making those choices, they're already engaged. So inherently, it's going to, it's going to sound good anyway. But those details, I just rather leave up to a choral director or the performers.